Good evening, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I hope wherever you are, you are having a good one. And welcome to our review, recap, chat, whatever you want to call it, of episode 22, Married at First Sight UK, aka Tuesday night's episode. And more importantly, welcome to Love Hate Week. I already know that I'm going to really enjoy this week. It just is delivering from the get go. And from the little trailer at the end of this week to come, I just think it is going to continue to get better. And I'm here for it. So without further ado, let's just get into it because we have a lot to cover for this episode. So the episode starts out with the usual round robin of all the different couples and apartments getting their feelings or opinions on the night before. So yesterday was the commitment ceremony. Luke, funnily enough, is saying that, you know, he feels that JJ and Ella could have done this another way. And I find that very interesting because Luke was the one speaking up for JJ at the table to Bianca, of all people, saying that, you know, well, JJ didn't know. So pipe down, Luke. (laughs) Uh, Peggy's happy for Ella. George is still kind of hung up on what they discussed about their own relationship at the commitment ceremony. And it just feels like there's been a shift in George, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in the review because there's a lot of overlap here and I don't want to just repeat myself. So all of their mornings are interrupted by a big gold envelope sliding under the door, giving them their latest task. So as I've mentioned, it is love hate week and they've all been given this objective to list and discuss three things about their partner that they dislike and three things that they like. And because God is good, he gives us the dislikes first. So the evil part of me is like, <laughs> give it to me. I am, um, I know, I am a masochist. I'm a sick person. I enjoy the drama of it all. And look, the dislikes are always just more interesting viewing. So let's just do these in order. So we get Paul and Tasha first. Paul's dislike um, that he gives to Tasha is that she's not as affectionate as he'd like. So Tasha takes that. She says she'll, you know, keep it in mind in the future, easy peasy. And she says that Paul's dress sense is something that, um, you know, is a negative for her. Like, again, it's a nice, easy one. He doesn't seem too precious. He actually says to her that she can pick out three outfits of his to go and get rid of. And I think it's the first time I've seen Tasha smile since Erica joined the experiment (laughs) and she's straight into his closet. She already knows what shirts she's getting rid of and he's trying to make a case for them and he's trying them on and he looks cute in them. I just think Paul is a sweetheart. He's so cute. And yeah, I like them as a couple. So next we go over to Roz and Thomas and um, Roz's negatives are that he sheds too much hair and that he doesn't use sex toys on her. I just like I don't know what to do with that. I don't think Thomas can help, you know, his his follicular cycle or whatever you want to call it, like the length of his anagen phase. So maybe just hoover that shit up. But the sex toys thing, she is like a dog with a boner, like a raging boner. And Tom actually says as his negative that for someone who wants more, you know, adventure if you like in the bedroom she actually doesn't initiate and I just the minute it came out of his mouth you can see her face light up and it's like don't threaten Roz with a good time because he's not going to get a minute's peace now she will take that feedback very seriously I can already tell so yeah good luck ever getting some sleep again so next we move over to Laura and Arthur and Laura's critique of Arthur is that he interrupts and he doesn't listen And she also brings up, you know, him and his little white lies. I mean, he will never live down that vow thing. But look, it is what it is. We then get Arthur's critiques or negatives. And his first one is just a real kind of softball, innocuous one that she doesn't train in the gym with him and that it's something that he's passionate about. And he's always kind of wanted someone to enjoy that with. So straight away, I'm thinking he's just going to give her, you know, you're too pretty, (laughs) you're too perfect because he just doesn't want to upset her at this point. But no, Arthur surprises me. And his second negative is Laura's mood swings. And my God, talk about poking the bear. She goes nuts. She is adamant that she doesn't have mood swings. And, you know, it's just sometimes she's upset. They're not mood swings. (laughs) And she's so triggered, like she's completely nearly validating his point she actually like takes the page out of his book and rips it up and per Arthur just backs down completely and says oh it it was just it was you know I couldn't think of anything else to say and then Laura goes straight back to well this is what I'm talking about with your white lies you know this is another white lie example and I'm just thinking 
it's not a white lie. He was actually trying to be honest and you went ape shit and now he's scared again. <laughs> so poor Arthur, he can't get a break with this woman. <laughs> Next, we move over to Peggy and George. And of course, Peggy is, I mean, I'm sure she was disappointed that she only gets to list three. <laughs> she probably could have filled that entire notebook. But straight away, she says that her negatives for George are his career aspirations, that he's a bit of a chameleon in social situations and she can't really gauge who the real George is. And then finally, his passions and hobbies. <laughs> and I'm just thinking fucking hell <laughs> so basically everything about him is a negative um just your whole general personality <laughs> okay peggy and george rightfully comes back and says you know my negative is that you're quite judgmental and peggy kind of half owns it she almost feels to me like she knows she's being judgmental but she doesn't actually think it's a bad thing because she believes she's right to be judgmental in this situation if that makes sense I don't know I kind of feel like she's just embarrassed by him most of the time and I nearly think because she found out all this video stuff way in the beginning and she's she's known this and she's kind of been all right and then in-laws week happened and the minute she was around her family and they mentioned this again it's like the first time all over so I do think that she cares a lot about what other people think as well and that's probably exacerbated any doubts that she has about her and George which is not great uh, so next we go over to Erica and Jordan this is a very different side of Erica and Jordan they have kind of well at least Erica's kind of portrayed them as this great couple they're getting on like a house on fire everything's wonderful they're the strongest couple in there I mean that's what rubbed Tasha up the wrong way so much but here we see a completely different version of them. They're a total shit show. And like their negatives don't seem like if I was just reading these negatives on paper, they don't seem like awfully out of left field. Like Erica says that they have a different sense of humor, that maybe he could be better at communication. And Jordan's saying that, you know, sometimes she can be a bit harsh on him. But it just goes absolutely left. And Jordan says like he can't remember the last time she said something nice to him. It just like goes totally tits up. And he feels like he's always been told to work on himself. But she's nothing to address. And she's screaming that she doesn't have anything to work on. Because she's already done her work on herself. And I'm and I'm looking at her going. I've no doubt she has done plenty of work on herself in her life. But she's early to mid 20s I think. Like someone needs to break it to her that. All life is, is continuously working on yourself and it's never 100% done. I mean, like, it's shit, but it's the truth. And this blow up just kind of makes me think that, like, have they just been arguing and going back and forth behind the scenes and have put on the smiley faces in front of all of the other participants and the cameras and we're only now starting to see that they're actually not getting along all that well? Because, yeah, that's what it looks like. So next we go over to Jay and Luke. And straight away, Luke is like giving it the big one that this is perfect. He really wants to hear, you know, Jay's negative opinions or her her negative feedback or whatever you want to call it, like her notes for him. And he wants to hear what it is he does that annoys her. And the first thing she says is that sometimes he overshares his opinions where maybe it's unsolicited advice nearly in social situations. And we've seen this. But Luke's face immediately, for someone who was dying to hear Jay give him a bit of feedback, he doesn't seem to be in agreement with that. And then he nearly catches himself and says, oh, okay, you know, well, next time this happens, maybe squeeze my knee and I'll decide if it's something that I want to take on board. <laughs> so I'm like, right oh. And then his negatives for Jay were kind of what he was saying to his friend on in-laws week that she's not really honest with her feelings and that she doesn't tell him off this is like the second time now that he's specifically said you know that she doesn't tell me off she doesn't kind of you know like give out to me if you want and I didn't really know what to make of this critique the first time or this time round. But straight after this, we do see the girls meet up and the boys meet up. So Luke meets up with George and they're talking about the task and, you know, the outcomes from those conversations. And Luke is elaborating on this a little bit with George and he's kind of saying that you know he needs a woman who's going to like keep him in line because he's afraid that otherwise he'll just walk all over them and take advantage and he feels like he could go to a strip club and she'd be okay with it and then you know he'd go out and he'd get a girl's number and she'd be okay with it 
And I'm thinking, hold on a second. Like, that's not a girlfriend or wife's job. Like, you maybe want them to speak up a little bit more when they're upset. That's that's valid. That is fair. You maybe want them to not people please as much. Also valid. But it's not their job to stand over you and be your mother slash probation officer slash keeper. And the fact that his mind is even going there, like, you're a grown man. You should at this stage know right from wrong and know how to be a decent human being and a decent partner. And if you have a partner who's maybe reluctant to pick fights with you or you feel, you know, that they aren't very vocal when they're upset about something, by all means, raise that with them. But don't try and make that into a reason why you might then stray or act like a complete prick, quite frankly. And, you know, it's somehow because they haven't kept you in line. Like, fuck right off with that. No, even George is looking at him funny. But I think George is just hearing another man say that, you know, his wife doesn't give out to him or critique him enough. And he probably is like, what does that feel like? (laughs) Do you want to swap? Maybe you'd like Peggy. (laughs) Okay, sorry, I'll stop ragging on Peggy. But ironically, at this very moment in the episode, she is over talking to the girls and she is, of course, bringing up the content that George has online and that all of her family has kind of seen it. And it's been, she says, it's gone viral in my family. All my cousins are sending it around. And I feel like that kind of explains why she suddenly becomes so fixated again on this video. Um, But yeah, so before we get kind of into the final scenes, we do get a little double date with the new couples. It's all very vanilla, to be honest, nothing of note there. We see Laura gymming with Arthur and Arthur's winded after like two minutes, which I find adorable. So be careful what you wish for. Um, (laughs) Thomas comes home with a big bag of sex toys for (laughs) Roz. Uh, I think that's so sweet. So he he gets like a little Playboy bunny costume for her. He gets like a little vibrating couple's toy and he gets like a dildo. (laughs) And I just, I would have given any amount of money to be in that store behind him in the queue at the cash register or anywhere in the vicinity while he was browsing. I would have loved to be there when like a sales girl came up to him and said, you know, what are you looking for? And started, you know, the way they always give you like that inappropriate level of comfort. And they're like, does she like this? Does he like this? And you're like, oh my God, just go away. So God love him. He's really tried. He brought home the least risque of all of the costumes, but Roz is a good sport. She puts it straight on and she looks so cute in it. So I'm liking Roz and Thomas in this era. Uh, I hope this continues because I find it wildly entertaining. (laughs) So it is with a heavy heart that we return to Peggy and George. Peggy comes home to the apartment and she kind of just says to George, listen, I need to see this video. I just need to watch it. I'm shocked that she hasn't watched it already considering her whole bloody family has. But I'm very happy to report that we also get to see the video <laughs> because I've been very curious and it does seem like she sh- it's just him in like this leopard cheetah type leotard, you know, workout onesie and he's got his boxers on underneath it by the looks of it and he's on camera. It's like a gaming type like chat and he just does squats like with his back to the camera and it's not sexual in any way like anyone that finds that sexual is disturbed it's just I think it's meant to be funny it is embarrassing it's stupid but I don't think that there is anything like pornographic about it and I do feel that there's just this shift in George he's kind of at the point where he realizes the writing is on the wall this girl is just she's not going to ever claim you And he kind of just says to her, great, watch the bloody video, like just watch it and we can either move on or we won't and we'll just go our separate ways. Preach, George, preach, because that's what we're all thinking right now. (laughs) And she watches the video and she's just, she's like outraged. She feels sick. She says that, you know, this isn't funny when you're in a relationship. This wasn't while they were in a relationship. This was before he even met her. And I kind of feel like someone needs to break the news to Peggy that any man she meets, especially like at this time in life when they're fully grown, if you think you're going to meet a man who hasn't done something ridiculously stupid in their past, like when they're 
talking to their boys when they're on a night out. Like if you really think that there's a man out there (laughs) who hasn't done something stupid thinking it was funny that you just don't find funny. Like you're going to be disappointed, pet. (laughs) But look, she gets up, she storms out with her ass cheeks hanging out of those jeans, might I add, you know, clutch my pearls. She's so offended about a bit of ass cheek. So yeah, I think they're done. And I do think that it's for the best because she was never going to proudly bring him home to mam, let's be honest. Um, But yeah, no, that's kind of them for it. We do get a little bit of the positives. Like it's amazing the entire episode is all the negative stuff. And then the last like five minutes we get couples telling each other you know the positives so Tash is telling Paul that he's a family man and he is just like beaming he loves that Uh, Luke is telling Jay that she's socially confident Arthur is saying that Laura's kindness um but he says your kindness when I do something wrong I just thought that was so cute (laughs) even Laura cracks up because she sees how cute that was Laura says to Arthur that she loves his vulnerability and his pure intent and I like that she's given him a nice compliment and it it is a genuine compliment it's so true he does have a real pure kind of heart about him and yeah Arthur's sweet but she's talking to the camera afterwards and she's like you know for the next few weeks we really have to figure out if there's any feelings there and I'm kind of thinking so you're saying that there's not really feelings there that you're not decided on whether there's feelings there I'm not surprised I'm just surprised that she's saying that because two minutes earlier she's you know having a moment with Arthur and he's saying you know we're definitely more than just friends and she's like "Uh uh-huh I do hope that Arthur's not too invested in her because I feel like he's going to be disappointed and then the last one we get is Jordan and Erica Jordan says Erica is caring and Erica says that Jordan stands by her and he's very protective so yeah we've seen that in Jordan this week it's been very very sweet And they're all smiles and happiness again. And you can kind of tell by the way that they're looking at each other and the body language that they've probably had a bit of sex in between (laughs) the negatives and now because all in all, they just seem happier. We do get a little preview of next episode, as always, which I love. We're going to finally see this fight between Luke and Jordan and see what the hell triggered it because I am intrigued. We do see um, the boys kind of breaking it to Arthur that Laura isn't the one (laughs) just we'll just say that and we see the reactions of the group of you know another couple walking in I mean do we really like are we all kind of like I wonder who it could be no we kind of know it's going to be Ella and JJ they haven't shown them I think I spied a clip of Ella's face at like a dinner table in one of the previews Now, granted, it may have been a dream or a hallucination. I did mention I was quite sick the last week. So there's that. But I do think we're going to see Ella and JJ back. But yeah, that was it. That's Tuesday night's episode, episode 22 of Married at First Light UK. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I know I'm a rambler. I try to keep it brief. So I am off to bed on that note. And I hopefully will see you back here tomorrow. Sweet dreams.